hell of a lot of trainiacs out there that are doing beach starts that need to know how to do beach starts. So your face can hit the water. Be expected, I haven't run barefoot in. Hold on. Good morning, Trainiacs. Solid, solid group ride with the gang today. Actually took down a sprint. 50K in an hour 38. Beach triathlon starts today. Morning, Trainiacs. Bring you in nice and tight here. As I was going through the footage of the week that I spent at Victoria Beach holidaying, i.e. training camping, I realized that we have all this kick-ass footage of us practicing beach starts. Look at this. Oh, how epic is that? That's so nice. And I thought, you know what? There's a hell of a lot of trainiacs out there that are doing beach starts that need to know how to do beach starts. And it started by Pat basically just doing this for fun. And what I wanna show you is how smooth it can be. It's not a scary thing. You just need to have the right technique. Those majestic beasts there. Okay, so I wanna show those again. And I wanna pause on a couple different spots here. Number one, when you do a beach start, you are going to have quite a few less people around you than you would in like the human washing machine where there's a ton of people in a deep water start. There's typically either just a rolling start where there's one person every two seconds or they'll line up a wave of say your age group. So it might be 50 to 100 athletes instead of thousands. So you can go off right from the start. You don't have to seed yourself away from the main churn. You can basically just line up and as they say go, you go. So Pat here, he's practicing running at full speed. And then here's the trick to it. When you get in the water, run in just like you normally would until you get to about knee height water and we'll see it from another angle, but you can see here that Pat's leg is kind of kicked out to the side to get over the water. And he does a little hop there. And that's not like a normal running stride. He's kind of making sure that he's hopping his way over the water. Then when he gets to a point that it's hard to hop your way out, somewhere around knee height in the water, you do a jumping, dive in. What you can see right there is this little bump. That's Pat's head. Ah, Pat's head is small. It's low. And you tuck your head into the water and then you hammer. When you start swimming at the start of a triathlon, if you're competing for personal best and you're competing for qualifying times, you want the first 200 meters or so of a swim to be all out so that you can get on the fastest toes possible and try to get as many people in behind you as possible so you don't get knocked around. There's another spot that I wanna show you here. We're lining up as if we were at a line. You can see that we're kind of shaking out our hands. You wanna always stay warm so that you're ready to go and you're not letting anything settle, even just for the few seconds. You wanna to get to a start line, whether it's a deep water start or a beach start, pretty close to like the heart rate conditioning that you're gonna be at when you go. You don't wanna go from like totally sedentary to bam, because your body's not gonna be ready for it. So you see that Pat, we were just kind of goofing around, but he's shaking his hands out. He's getting ready, he's crouching back, and then bam, we went off, we did our two little skips, and then dove into the water. And oh, here's a trick for diving into the water. When you're diving into the water in a race, one of the tricks that I like to do is instead of putting my swim cap on and then my goggles, I like to put my goggles on and then put a swim cap over top of it. You're not gonna have people that are picking away at the strap. It's gonna be harder for your goggles to be knocked off. And then when you have the instance like this right here, where we dive in, oh, hello, slow motion. I used to walk the pressure. 
and your face smacks the water, you're not gonna have your goggles that go, whoa, because what typically happens when your face smacks the water is this little lip at the top of the goggles catches water and it wants to be pulled off. But if you've got the goggles that are just kind of overlapping it with one cap or two swim caps, if it's really cold, it's not gonna be knocked off. So your face can hit the water, but what you do is you put your arms way overhead, tuck your chin down to your chest so that your forehead is gonna hit the water, not your goggles, giving you a black eye, and then you're good to go. Plus, you look awesome like this. Like, everyone will be intimidated. They'll be like, oh man, I gotta change how my goggles look. And there's one really good angle of Pat going out that I wanted to show you here at the end. Oh, who's this stud coming in? Right there. That's exactly what I'm talking about with scooting your leg over the water. So as you run in, run in full gas like you normally would when you're just running all out and hit that point where you feel like you've got to scoot your leg a little bit over the water, kick it just slightly out to the side to lift it over the surface of the water so it's not dragging, throwing you off balance. And then when you get to about knee height and it's too hard to hop over the water, then do your little dive. Bam, you started a race and you've ripped the band-aid off and then it's all smooth sailing after that because we as trainiacs have done the work beforehand to be ready for the race. You just gotta get started. Mm. Ooh. That ride this morning, trainiacs, was foggy. It was fun. I took a sprint, but man, it was foggy. It was so foggy that when we'd stand up to sprint, everyone had drips of like humidity that was coming off the top of their helmet. We looked good. We looked good when we rolled into that Starbucks. You know not Just gotta make a quick trip to the little cyclist's room. when I used to wear shirts? No, me neither. Coach Pat has me on tap for a very meat and potatoes-y kind of race pace run, about 8K, little bits above race pace. I'm gonna do it barefoot to make sure that my tootsies don't blister up while I'm going barefoot in these shoes. Ooh, cold. Nothing feels good like a cold heart rate strap. All right, you ready? I'm ready. I'll explain why the race specific run when I come back, when I explain the run. Okay. Almost caught a car crash on tape there. 8.4 kilometers in 37 minutes on the nose. That is about 5.1 miles at a 425 per kilometer pace. 705 for, per mile. And in that, I did five times one minute above race pace. And the rest of it was around zone two being like half Ironman pace. The reason that we're doing that is because 10 days from now we're gonna do like a screw off Olympic race where we're just gonna use it for testing and do some things that I wouldn't normally do in an Olympic race to try to get some metrics that we'll use for half Ironman Austin. That was one breath. So we start doing some race pace stuff right now. Oh, my heart rate is connected. Oh, okay, good to know now. Let's see how the Tootsies are doing. Okay, okay, a little bit of a blister. Well, to be expected, I haven't run barefoot in months. All right, Traniacs, that's a day.